tomorrow. Okay, wonderful. So we uh, are at um, DAF 132 today, and uh, our topic is proving that you can do a Brit Milah on Shabbat. Uh, and we're going to have four proofs. I mean, it's not obvious because it is, in fact, a Milacha. Uh, so we're going to have four proofs that, uh, um, override, that Milah override Shabbat. The first is from Ula, who says it's simply a tradition, a Halacha. Rabbi Elazar ben Padat is going to you go go to the words Ot and Berit and Dorotam. Prove from there. Rabbi Yochanan is will prove it from the word Yom, and Rav Acha Bar Yaakov will prove it from the word Shemini. Uh, and so uh, then from there we'll um, go into different proofs about Sadat and Brit Mila. Um, sadat. If someone has a nega Sadat. On, the, on their member, and they need to do Brit Milah. In general, there's a prohibition. You cannot, if you have a Sadat, you cannot cut off the nega of Sadat. Uh, you have to go and show to Kohen and wait till it heals. You can't just cut it off and say the guy is Tahor. Um, and so since there is a prohibition of cutting off a nega, what if there is a nega on the, on the Milah, on the spot of the Brit Milah? Um, the halakha is that you do cut it anyway. Uh, so Brit Milah trumps um, that halacha of nega sarat, and so we'll end off the daf with uh, those halachot. All right, good. So we start near the top here, meti be. So, no, not sorry, that's not the right one. Um, uh, top all top of the page. Ad kan la peligera banan ale ella bemachshire mila. Only machloket between the Rabbi uh, Elia. Ezed and the rest of the Chachamim was regarding the preparations for Brimila, whether you can prepare the knife and bring the knife and all that. Everyone agrees that you can do the Brimila itself on Shabbat. And so now we're looking for a source for Rabbanan that, is, that, that in fact is the Halacha. Amar Ula Halacha, Vechen Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Halacha. Um, we understand this is halacha le Moshe Mishinai. It's not, a, it's not, wasn't by a vote, it's not by a, a explicit pasuk, it's not a derivation from pasuk, but rather it's simply an oral tradition. Um, okay, now we are going to question this. Metibe from this following uh, Tosefta. Menan pikuach nefesh shadachet ha-shabbat, Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah Omer, ma mila shiachat mevarav shel adam tochet ha-shabbat? Okay, so we're using the, this Brit uh, Milah law to, to learn something else, to learn a Kal Bachomer from it. Well, I'll tell you what it is in a second. But from the fact that we're using the law of, of Brit Milah with the Kal Bachomer, that means that it can't be a Halakha, because there's a general rule that you don't use, um, you cannot use, learn a, a Kal Bachomer from uh, something that is simply a tradition, only from a Pasuk. Well, I'll try to explain a little bit why that might be the case. Okay, anyway, the Kavachom is as follows. Um, if Mila, Biri Mila, is only one of uh, uh, a person's limbs, and yet performing Biri Mila overrides Shabbat, all the more so to save a person's whole body, whole life, that would override Shabbat. Okay, it's not exactly a mitzvah, it's not quite exactly the same, but I guess the idea is that if you save a person's life, they can do more Shabbatot, more mitzvot, they can do everything with their whole body all the time. And so that certainly uh, would make sense that that's better. If you have to see, there's a note from Tosafot on the side here, uh, just in circumcision, which is one mitzvah over our Shabbat, all the more so saving a life, and that will show that then you can do all the, all the mitzvot of the Quran. Okay, but I think there's also a, a bodily aspect, just uh, that you're kind of perfecting one limb that needs that needs uh, perfecting, so all the more so you can help the whole body uh, not die. Okay, so that's the Kalva Chomed. Now, visa here's the question. If you say, as Ula just said, that the fact that the B'rim B'la can override Shabbat is a halacha, is a tradition, can we learn a Kalva Chomed from a tradition? We cannot, and that we, that rule we learn from this following B'raita, Rabbi al Azar is responding to something that Rabbi Akiva said before. Rabbi Akiva has not quoted. We're talking about a Nazir. A Nazir 
cannot become tamei met. And so uh, Rabbi Akiva derives that he, uh, uh, he cannot um, uh, touch some, a bone the size of a grain of barley. And so all the more so he cannot touch uh, a devi'it of blood, which is bigger. And so Rabbi al says, Akiva, um, this, the fact that Nazir cannot touch a bone uh, um, the size of a grain is not exclusive to soup, but rather it's a halakha. And so this would then be a kalvachomid, and we cannot derive something kalvachomid from a halakha. And we see from here that there's a general rule that you cannot derive a kalvachomid from a halakha. And therefore, since in the previous Tosefta over here, we do derive a law from a, a kalvachomid from a halakha, we do derive a kalva chomer from, from Berit Milah, therefore Berit Milah cannot be a halakha l'moshe m'sinai, because we do use it as a kalva chomer. Rabbi, it's actually stronger because it's Rabbi Elazar and Azariah in both cases. Correct, very Second good. Time he's... Right, his own, his, his, by his own opinion, he, he, he says you cannot do that, right? So that, that's actually, right, that's a very important point because Rabbi Akiva, who is not quoted here, does learn a Kaaba Chomet, right? So for Rabbi Akiva, it would be okay, but from the fact that Rabbi Allah Zabin does, does not, does use a Kaaba Chomet, it means that he cannot think it's a halakha, and that is a Tanaitic opinion, and that would reject Ula. Let's try to explain why this is. This is actually very important. It means that Kaaba Chomet is not necessarily a simple logical proof. But if it's just a reasonable logical proof, then you can apply it to anything. But rather, it's one of the midot sha'atona nidreshet behen. It's one of the character traits, that's what midah literally means, that the Torah, that we can uh, derive something from the Torah, because the Torah is written with, within the system uh, that presumes that you can take any law and derive a kavachomer from it. It's a systematic, that has, has a reasonable, logical system that includes kavachomer, but also has word, you know, word connections and all that. That's why you can do it. However, a halakha that's just from a tradition, halakha l'mashim sinai is just a one-off. It could be an exception. It could be something that doesn't fit in to with that logic rest of that reasonable system. Uh, it could be just something that's you know, really important by itself, and therefore you can't derive something else from it. It's not part of the, uh, not part of the, the, uh, the whole system of the written law. So that's very important that the 13 midot in general are midot of dirashot, of pisukim, of written pisukim. It's only scripture um, that's written in that way that you can derive things, not simple logic. It's a similar a rule that you can't derive a kalachomer from a dirabanan or from a gezerah. Sometimes the rabbis make a gezerah. They're very extreme on something because people are not following it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, that just because it's a gezerah that's actually more stringent and that you can learn other things from it. All right, we're going to have a bunch of kavachomers later in the daf, so um, uh, that's good to, uh, to think about. Okay, so that was option number one, and it was rejected. So, Ela Amar Rabbi El Azar, Atya Ot Ot. This is Rabbi Azar ben Pedat, this is Amora, not, not Rabbi El Azar ben Azariah. Okay, well, because uh, it's not part of a baraita, he's, uh, and he's uh, all Amora, they're all, all, everyone explaining this is our. Amoraim, you have Ula, Bedad, you have Hanan, Yaakov, and they're all early Amoraim. So yeah, he's just another, uh, you know, another Amora explaining it. It's not, it doesn't say the Tanya. It's, it's not quoting a Braita, it can't be a Tanya to give it. Uh, no, because he's not reject. He himself is not rejecting it. It's the Talmud that quotes a, a, to these two Baraitot in order to reject Ula. Right? He doesn't say Amad. Doesn't say anywhere Amad to be Elazar. Right? And within the Baraita, he's speaking to Rabbi Akiva. He's not speaking to Ula. Um, okay. Good. So uh, we have the word Ot, and the word Ot it says it in Bereshit 17. We have a lot of pesukim, so I'll try to bring them. Uh, 17, it's on the screen, it's too small. So there you go, Brit Mila, where regarding Abraham is called Ot Berit. Um, while we're in here, let's read the whole, all, both next passage also. We're going to have this a lot. And do this for generations. So all these three words are going to come up here. We have Brit Milah is called Ot, it's called Brit, and it's four generations. 
And uh, regarding Shabbat as well, we have here, Ush Martem, uh, no, here, right? So, here, Shabbat is also called an ot, but we're going to see a second, also has dorotechem. Um, okay, good. So, now, uh, so the Rebbe says, it says the word ot, ot, and uh, therefore, that connection teaches you uh, that. Um, yeah, that uh, circumcision is as important as Shabbat, and therefore you would perform a circumcision even on Shabbat. Hold on. Shabbat. We're going to fill in. It also says ot. So then, would you say we should wear tefillin on Shabbat? Okay. The analogy is not precise because you don't have to violate Shabbat in order to wear tefillin. So the commentaries will say, oh, it talks about writing tefillin. You know, uh, or you know, the, which, but that's really the preparations for tefillin. So the analogy isn't so exact, but okay. In any case, this is you know the source that we do not uh, wear tefillin on Shabbat. Although we did see that if there's a if there are tefillin left out in the open and you're afraid that they're going to get ruined, then you can wear them, right? And that, therefore, and then carry them back into the shute achid. So wearing tefillin uh, is called wearing; it's not called carrying. Um, okay, but anyway, this is a source that that there's no that there's no um, mitzvah to wear tefillin on Shabbat. So the word ot is too ambiguous; it occurs in too many places. So that can't be the derivation. Elat ya berit, berit. That says the word berit uh, in uh, both contexts, right? And uh, here in Shabbat, uh, right? Just two pesukim later, the Shabbat means that the Shabbat also that the Shabbat or tam berit. Olam, right? Um, and so really, this berit milah and Shabbat, in fact, really are the two. Uh, main things in the Torah that are the uh, essence uh, symbol um, of the Berit, and so we can learn it from that. Uh, well, and Berit does not occur regarding any other mitzvah. Is that true? I think so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, if you find another one, let me know, but I think that's true. Um, okay, but still, we still that's not conclusive by itself, because Gadol Dichti Be Berit Lidche Shabbat. Um, the word berit uh, applies to a, an adult. Um, uh, okay. Uh, so, gadot hibe berit lidche shabbat. So, we, we would know that an adult should be permitted. Uh, to do berit milah as an adult. If he didn't get to do it as a kid, he can do it as an adult because an adult is part of the covenant. Um, but how do we know that that would apply also to a child? Ella ya dorot dorot. Ah, so then we're going to go to the word lidorotechem. We're going to berit milah when it says lidorotechem. That is specifically talking about the child because if you want to pass on the berit to the next generation, Right, so that's how you do it when they are a baby, um, which is really the essence of the bit according to Rabbi Sassoon, right? The essence of the berit milah is that you're making a cut and passing through koret berit, um, and so that child's children will, um, when that kid grows up and has has kids of his own, will pass through the berit. So we, so the word lidorotechem is really even a more important word, and it also says the word lidorotechem regarding Shabbat. All done, that doesn't work either because sisit, it also says, right, it also says, ledorotechem. And so, what are you going to say? Sisit is doche Shabbat? Well, actually, sisit, we always wear sisit on Shabbat, but it was talking about, again, the preparation, like the filin. So, again, the analogy is not exact, um, but we don't want to bring in just rely on dorot because then sisit would be equal. So we're going to bring all the, all these together. Um, the, these three words, ot, berit, and dorot, only occur in berit milah and regarding Shabbat. And that proves that berit milah uh, for both adults and children is as important as Shabbat and is doche Shabbat. Okay, that was the second derivation. And now the third, Rabbi Yohanan Amar, Amar Kedab Bayom, so since 
uh, says this is this according to this pasuk from Bayikra in Parashat Tazriya, U Bayom Hashemini Yimol Besar Orlato. So that day it could have just said Bashimini Yimol Besar Orlato. All right, so that's Rabbi Yochanan, his colleague, Amar Shakish, tells Rabbi Yochanan, Shabbat. Well, how about, what about a Zav and Mitzorah? Here you go, look at Vayikra 14. And so on. A Mitzorah, after he, his, uh, um, his skin lesions are cured, he has to wait seven days, and then on the eighth day, he brings a Kurban. So, if it says, if you're learning from the word Ubayom, then I would derive that also a leper can bring a Kurban on Shabbat, if the eighth day falls out on Shabbat, and that is not the halacha, right? So therefore, your derivation um, was going to derive something that isn't true regarding the leper. Uh, so that's not good. Oh, that pasuk in Vayikra 14 is teaching me Ubayom that we, the leper has to bring his sacrifices during the day and not at night. It's not telling you anything about Shabbat. Oh, well, obviously, the next question is, So say also so here regarding Brimila, that Ubayom HaShemini is teaching you, you do Brimila during the day and not at night, which is true. No, Hahumi Ben Shimonat Yamim Nafka. No, I know that already that I have to do Brimila during the day from Bereshit, where it says Ben Shimonat Yamim and it says the day. So I have a second Pasuk here that says the day to teach me even on Shabbat. Uh, okay, well, go, going back to the leper, Haname, me beyom savoto nafka, regarding, well, this pasuk is not actually about a leper, but rather is in Vayikra chapter 7, at the end, the last pasuk of chapter 7, Sheza Shesiva Adonai et Moshe, Behar Sinai, beyom savoto et bene Israel, bene Israel la kribet kol benehem. It's talking actually about all korbanot, and the day there is talking about on the day that Moshe was commanded. Okay, but still, uh, we're using that word, the day, to teach that all korbanot are sacrificed during the day, which is true. And so uh, there you go. I already know that all korbanot are sacrificed during the day from this general pasuk about all korbanot. And therefore, the pasuk uh, in chapter 14, uh, from there, I could learn that... Um, that I would bring the leper's sacrifices even on Shabbat, and that isn't true. So we have a problem with this yom derivation. Oh, but we're going to resolve that. Even though it's true, I learned that all korbanot I bring during the day from the from that pasuk at the in uh, in Vayikra. Still, I need an, another way, another pasuk by the leper to tell me that it's only during the day. Why? Because the leper has a special halakha that he's supposed to bring to animals. However, if he is poor, right, in verse 21, it says, Vim dalhu, and he cannot afford animals, then the leper can bring birds. So I might have thought that now he has a leniency that he can bring birds. Maybe that brings along with it other leniencies too, and he can bring it at night. And so therefore, I can't use the pasuk, the, the general one that says all korbanot are during the day to learn the leper. I need the leper to tell me that even the leper can only bring it during the day, even although there are other leniencies that he brings birds. So, so that's why I need it. Um, Matkif la Ravina, Ravina um, question challenges this elemata he has zar kasher bahen, behe onen kasher bahen. Now that you told me that a leper has a special leniency, that he can, a poor leper can bring a bird, well, maybe that bring, comes along with other leniencies. You know, every this is a whole system. And so um, perhaps another leniency is that a leper sacrifice can be offered by a non kohen or by a kohen where, who has someone who just died. You know, he's in uh, before his, before the person, the loved one was buried. In general, a kohen cannot in that state cannot perform, but maybe for a leper he could to make it easier for the leper. Oh, the pasuk that says the leper has to bring during the day 
also brings back all these other laws and says a leper is only different from other laws in that a poor person can bring birds. But in all other regards, the leper is the same as, uh, as everyone else. Okay, that, which we, uh, that uh, discussion that we just had um, is, a, is a really good example of uh, the, one of the last midot um, shatran uh, v'shbehem of Rabbi Ishmael, right? It's 13 midot. I think this is the 11th one. Um, uh, we say often, but we don't often see examples of it. Right? Remember the 13 midot? Okay, so this, this is a, there's a, only a handful of examples. This is one of them. So it means like this. So that's the sacrifice of a leper was part of a generality of all sacrifices. Right, this is one example of many sacrifices. However, Yatsamin Hakilal, they don't be Daval Hadash, but there's a new law about the leper that he can bring a bird if he's poor. That's not true regarding most sacrifices. You don't have a choice if you're poor to bring something else. So now you have the law of the leper has uh, removed itself from the generality. So now you cannot bring it back to the general. In other words, you can't apply a different law about the generality specifically that has to be during the day. We know that about all korbanot, and so we can't assume that the leper is the same. Um, so that's why we need the pasuk and uh, vayikra regarding the leper specifically that he is during the day. Until the pasuk brings it back explicitly. So once I have that pasuk, that says the leper is also during the day, now I know that in other matters also it's like the general sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Right, right. In this whole page, we're kind of, we, we, we know the outcome and uh, we're going back and looking for the derivation, right? For sure, if you have four different derivations of Vimilaz Doche Shabbat, then like, we, you know, we knew this already. So yes, it does look like they, we know that we know the halacha from tradition and we're looking for derivation. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't think the pasuk really does mean that, right? It's just, I mean, it's helpful to know the answer, you know, then you can figure, yeah. <laughs> figure out the you know, the rest of the crossword puzzle, but um, it doesn't mean that it's not an actual derivation. Okay, good. Uh, this is now the last derivation. It says, um, right, so the word shemini regarding Berit Mila, it means on the eighth day, specifically on the eighth day and no other day. So that means even if it's on Shabbat. All right, well, it's, it's not, so, not so clear. Maybe I need the eighth test to tell me the eighth day, so I know it's not the seventh day or before. It has to be from the eighth day. Oh, Actually, we have two, twice it says, Once in Pasha Tazriya, it says it again in Bereshit Yud Zayin. So I would know that I can't do it beforehand, from the from that pasuk so in Bereshit, and so by Yom is teaching even on Shabbat. Hold on, Bakatim Bale Mi Baile had the Mote Shivi, a had the Mote Teshi, the Mahal Hava Amina, the Mehad Hava Amina, Shivi Hu, the Lomata Zemane, Avash Mishimini Baelach, Zemane Hu. No, I still need both of them because if I only had one of them in, in Bereshit, I would know you can't do it for seven days, but I would think from the eighth day and on, I could do it. How do I know that I can't only the eighth day and I have to do it before after before the ninth? I cannot, you know, unless unless you know, or whatever circumstances, I have to do it on the eighth day specifically. It's not just any time the eighth day and on. That's why I need the other Pasuk um in by in Vaikra. So there you go, I need both of them. Ella Mahabarta Chivar means like it's white. Therefore, it's clear that the, halacha, that the derivation is as Rabbi Yochanan said from the word Yom and not from the word Shemini. Okay, so in fact, this fourth one is rejected. Tanya Kibateh Rabbi Yochanan. We have a Braita that supports Rabbi Yochanan, deriving it from Yom and not from the word Shemini. Shemini Yimol Afilu Beshabbat Ma'ani Mekayem Mechaleleha Motyumat so this is how the, the uh, 
the uh, uh, Midrash, is a Midrash Halacha, says as follows. We have two Pesukim. One regarding Shabbat says, Mechalaleha Motumat. If you violate Shabbat, any violation of Shabbat, death penalty. So that sounds like all, you know, all violations, including cutting someone and drawing and causing them to bleed, that's one of the melachot. So therefore, I might think that, um, uh, but that's one, another pasuk is, on the eighth day, I have to uh, do b'rit milam. So, so as follows. So what do I do with the pasuk that, mechalaleha motumat? Well, maybe that's regarding all other melachot, but it doesn't apply to b'rit milah. Or do you say the opposite, that even b'rit milah, and in that case, what would I do with shemini yimol? Uh, yes, on the eighth day, except for Shabbat, right? Now, they have two equally strong pesukim that are clashing with each other, and it's up for grabs which one will be more important, um, that I do, but never do melacha, even b'rit milah, I can't do, or I always do the eighth day, even on Shabbat. I don't know which one to pick. Therefore, the word bayom, it breaks the tie and tells me bayom hashemini. So what do you see from here? We're not learning it from the word shemini, because the word shemini by itself doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, is, does, is, is, is equal to Shabbat. But the extra word bayom, that's what, um, that's what the actual derivation is, which is what Rabbi Yohanan said. Okay, good. Now we're going to analyze this baraita. Right, this is a, a typical form of midrash halacha um, that you uh, you always uh, you kind of state a thesis and you weigh both opinions and then you come to the conclusion. The conclusion is usually what the same as what you started with, right? And so here, let's keep this clear. We have two stages, right? Shemini yimol afilu b'shabbat, right? Um, so that's. Uh, uh, that's like the hypothesis. Now, what do I do? Is that Bishar Melachot? So we start off stage one, assuming that um, it applies all the time, except for Brit Milah. So in other words, Brit Milah is, is stronger. That's stage one. Then we say, oh, Eno Ela, or no, maybe not. Maybe Filo um, Milah, uh, and, uh, and, and Milah is only, on, uh, uh, only if it's not Shabbat. And so, and Shabbat is stronger, and therefore we then we conclude. So we have stage one, stage two, and we conclude back to stage one. So Rava wants to analyze this further. What exactly was the Tana thinking in stage one? What exactly were they thinking in stage two? Right? Why? Why did he like the first one? And what was the problem? But the second one that he came back to the first one. Hachikama. This is how he meant to explicate it further. Shemini yimol afilu b'shabbat. Yes, you do b'rit milah even on Shabbat. Umad mekay mechalem ot yomat. What do I do with the pasuk that says you can't do melacha? Oh, that's talking about every other melacha, but not milah. B'shem melachot chus milah. Milah dachiyam. Milah is doches Shabbat. That's just paraphrasing what exactly what it says. My tama. What's the reason? And I was going to derive it from Kalba Chomer. Kalba Chomer who? Uma sarat shedocha et ha'aboda. Okay, What's, uh, uh, there's a few uh, laws that are hidden in here. So sarat uh, is, more, uh, is more important than the sacrificial service. Where do we see that law? Well, if a Kohen has sarat, then he cannot perform, right? And let's say there's no other Kohanim around. There's only this one Kohen, and he has sarat. Can we cut off his, his nega and then make him pure? No, we can't do that, right? We, we would have to forego all the sacrificial service because of sarat. So there you go. Sarat uh, is, um, is trumps, overrides the sacrificial service. And the sacrificial service, avodah duchat shabbat How do you know that? Well, we bring korbanot on Shabbat, right? Korban tamid, korban musaf of Shabbat. So if, if, if so, milah docha shabbat, milah docha ota, and yet milah is more important than leprosy, because we said, right, if there is a, uh, the, leper, le, the leper has an affliction on the brit milah area, you still cut it off. So there you go, brit milah is more important than Shabbat. So brit milah is more important than leprosy, and leprosy is more important than Shabbat. Therefore, Shabbat in Chedem Naboda, Enodin Shemila, Doche Ota, all the more so, Abrim Mila Bo Doche Shabbat. I made a little chart, so because I know it's confusing. So here's what, here's what we think in stage one. 
since leprosy is greater than sacrifices, right? Because a Kohen who has a, who's a leper doesn't, right, doesn't offer. And sacrifices, we do with them on Shabbat, so that's more important than Shabbat. And we also know that Rimila is more important than leprosy because you cut off a, a leper's berit, uh, uh, um, even if it has a nega on it. And therefore, right, if, hey, if you put all this together, so if Mila is even greater than leprosy, and leprosy is greater than sacrifice, is greater than Shabbat, then all the more so Mila is greater than Shabbat. That's what we think at first, right? And that is, in fact, the halacha. Um, so that's the, that was the first stage. Then stage two, we question that. Well, why do we question that? How do you know that leprosy is more stringent? Maybe really Shabbat is more chamosh. There's much more, much stricter punishments on Shabbat than there is in Sadat. Right, and so this this kavachomer, although it's true, you do you, you would uh, not you know you uh, it, in terms of practicality, there are cases where you would um, leprosy would override sacrifice, sacrifice would override Shabbat, but you can't learn from that that general leprosy is more stringent than Shabbat. Right, you look at, the, at which one pushes each other away, or look at the punishments. If you look at the punishments, clearly Shabbat is greater than leprosy. And similarly, sacrifices is greater than leprosy in another way. Perhaps the reason why a Kohen, who is a leper, cannot make sacrifices isn't because leprosy, the law of leprosy, is more important than sacrifices, but simply because this person has a blemish and he's just, he's not fit to, to do it. It's not about importance. Okay. So that, in that way, reject the Kavachomer. And therefore, since this Kavachomer is not necessary, right, because it, be, it could be disproven, that's why we need the Pasuk, that Bayom uh, Hashemini, to teach you that, in fact, you can't learn it from a Kavachomer, but you learn it from, a, from the word Bayom, that you do B'rit Mila even on Shabbat. Okay, good. So we have the, here the Amora Im are, you know, are, uh, uh, you know are, are analyzing the Midrash of the Tanaim and, uh, and, you know, explaining exactly what they were thinking the first stage, second stage. We're going to see another, one more example of that. Okay, Tanura Banan, Mila Dochet Hasarat. All right, we're now, we talked about Shabbat, Mila and Shabbat. Now we're going to focus on Mila and Sarat, right? The, that law that if there's uh, if there is a, 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 a nega on the baby's brit milah, uh, that we still do perform brit milah, and we cut it off, even though there's a general prohibition of cutting off a, a nega sarat. Okay, so how do we know? Milah dochata shabbat, ben bismana, ben shelo bismana. Whether you're doing the circumcision on the eighth day, or whether, for whatever reason, you didn't do on the eighth day, you still, you don't wait, you cut it off. Yom tov, ena docha, el you can perform on Yom Tov only if it's on the eighth day. If it's not on the eighth day, then you cannot do it on do it on Yom Tov. That's true today also. Halacha say, right? We only do Brit Milah on Shabbat or Yom Tov if it's the actual eighth day. But if we pushed it off, then you know, yeah, then you can't make it on Shabbat. Okay. What is the source of this uh, of the regarding Sadat? Sadat. It says you have to do brimila in all cases, right? Of the flesh, even if there's beheaded, you got to cut it off. Okay. What about That's from Devarim. That's a lot of says. So be careful. Don't uh, you know? Be careful to take care of the nega sadat in the right way. Bring it to the kohen. Do the waiting period. Do the whole tana period. Don't just cut it off. What is that talking about? In every other case, brimila. Over there, you cut it off. That's stage one, and which will be the conclusion. But before we conclude, let's think of another possibility. Maybe um, uh, maybe even with brimila, I can't cut it off. And what does it mean when it says to do brimila on the flesh? Only if there's no baheret there. But if there is, I can't do it. The conclusion is we go back to stage one, right? In other words, since we they, we can't prove it either way, right? In other words, there's two pesukim and they uh, they just contradict each other. 
because this one could override, this one can, that one can override. That's why the word besal specifically comes in as an added word, additional word that you wouldn't need, and tells you even if there's a beheaded, you cut off that flesh. Okay, so that was the Tanetic source. Adava again is going to come and explicate exactly what was going on at the first stage that was. Well, the thing, the first stage, the second stage. Amar Rava, Hai Tanah Mikra Mai Nicha Le, or Basof Mai Kakash Le. Achi Ka Amar Yimol Besar Or Lato, Vaaf Al Pi She Yesh Baheret. Okay, so you always do Brimila, even if there's a, a spot there. Man Mekayem Hisham Ebenek Asadat, Hisham Mekomot Chus Mimila, Al Mimila Tochet Hasadat. Okay, that's exactly what the what the Brayta just said. But now he's adding Mai Tama At Yamikra Vachomer. Again, the first stage is a kavachomer. Uma Shabbat hamura mila docha ota. Shabbat, which is very stringent in terms of his punishment. Now we're going the opposite. We're starting with the punishment one, which is very stringent in terms of punishment. Yet you do bedi mila on Shabbat. Sadat, which is less stringent in terms of punishment, all the more so. You have to do bedi mila on on the sadat and cut it off. Right? That's a lesser lesser prohibition of cutting off a nega sadat. So that's the first stage. Umay eno eno o eno. And how was the second stage? How would how would how did I reject that kavachom? The kamar hadar hadar kamar hadar kamar. Then he said second stage. Umay the Shabbat hamira. The masarat hamira. Who said Shabbat is more stringent? It is in terms of punishment, but maybe not. Maybe that's not the defining factor. Maybe sarat is stricter because she can. Dochat Aboda, Aboda Dochat Shabbat, as we said before, right? Sadat overrides the, the sacrificial service. If a Kohen is Sadat and doesn't serve and we don't cut it off, and Aboda, we do, we do sacrifice on Shabbat. So, therefore, from that perspective, um, it's Sadat is greater uh, than Shabbat. So, therefore, I say, we don't know. I just rejected the Kabbalah So, I'm um, stuck. That's why I need the Pasuk. Of basar. Okay, good. Lishna harina, another version of uh, what Ava said. Mila doche et sadat. My tama, how do I know that you do with it mila, even when there's sadat? That te ase, bedache lo ta ase. Because bid mila is a positive commandment. Positive commandment is stronger than a negative commandment of don't cut off a leprous spot. Umai o O eno. So that was the first stage. What's the second stage? The kamar, adar kamar, emar damlin anate ase vedache et lot ase, lot ase gereda. Ha ase ve lot ase hu. Oh, but that's only if there's a ase against lot ase. But here it's an ase against an ase and lot ase. When it says hisham edacha, that's also an ase to be careful from it and don't cut it off. And so I wouldn't know. And in that case, I would think that um, not cutting off the, the nega sarat is more important, and I wouldn't do bring mila if there was a leper spot. That's why I need the pasuk. Okay, not that it does another version. All right. Tenah gadol dichtib behu besar. All right. So now all this, I know only that it applies to an adult. Because uh, in adult, we have the, uh, how do we see that? The word adult applies, the, the word besad applies in the context of an adult here. Because this is a pasuk in, in Bereshit Yud Zayin, Ve'arel zachar asher lo yimol et besar olatov nechleta nefeshahim me'ameha. That that person, someone who didn't get blimilai gets punished. Who gets punished? Only an adult can get, get punished. Only an adult is responsible for, for such a thing. And so the word besad here is only in the context of an adult. So now I only know that an adult who has a leprous spot on his brimila can cut it off. How do I know that applies to a child also? A ch child also. Katan be besad. A child also says, besar in Pashat Tazriya. And that's talking about on the eighth day, that's talking about as an infant. But what we still don't know is in between, Benoni Minelan, from the ninth day until his 13th birthday, where it's not the eighth day, so I can't use Vayikra uh, Pasuk, and it's not, it's not Karet, it's not a Gadol, so I can't use the Bereshit Pasuk. How do I know that someone from an infant until before adulthood, um, I still do a Brimila, even if they have a leprous spot? 
Amar Abaye, Atya mi ben aya. Oh, I can learn from the common denominator of those two halachot. Mi gadol Atya sheken anushkaret. Can't learn from him, from a minor to or from a from an adult because only an adult gets uh, punishment. Mi katan lo Atya sheken be mi labizmana. And the baby, that's the that's the proper time. I might think only we do it at the proper time. Otherwise, wait till he gets better from the salah. However, they do have the common denominator that um, that they need and that they can uh, they can cut off the sarat, the, the baby and the adult. And so therefore we put those together and you know the adult does not have to, to think of the baby, that's not the right time, and the baby is not have cut it like the adult. And so those are irrelevant factors, and so we learn from that which is in between. Okay, and so now finally we're going to have a last uh, derivation from Rava. Uh, this is again a derivation that you can do Brimila even if the baby has Sarat or an adult has Sarat. Rava Amar Mila Bismana Doha Los Doha La Sericha Kera. The fact that I can uh, uh, chop off a lep leprous, leprous spot. Uh, regarding a baby who does on the eighth day, that I don't even need a pasuk. Mekal v'chomer atya uma Shabbat hamira doha sarat lo kol sheken. If Shabbat, which is very stringent uh, law, and yet I do b'di milah on Shabbat if it's the eighth day, so sarat, which is less stringent, all the more so. Okay, that makes sense, right? Well, Rav Safra doesn't like it. Amar Rav Safra the Rabbah. We might the Shabbat Hamira, the Masarat Hamira. You're only looking at the punishment and saying Shabbat is more is more uh, is more stringent. But maybe the punishment is not the defining factor. Maybe maybe something else. Maybe Sarat is in fact more stringent. You should shaken docha taboda baboda docha et Shabbat. Uh, right, because Sarat if a, if a kohen Sarat he doesn't do the sacrifice and sacrifice we do on Shabbat. So therefore, you see that Sarat is more important than Shabbat. So you can't, I just challenged you, Kabbalah Chomer. Atam la mishum de hamira sarat, el la mishum de gavra hu de la hazeh. No, hold on, I can answer that and say, that's not, that's not because of a, it's, it's better or worse, just this person, this Kohen, is not fit to be, uh, to serve, right? It's not about importance. Am I? But that's not true. Ve'yakot z'baharatov ve'yavod, Rav Safrad will say, Okay. So, so he is fit to serve. Cut off his leprous spot, and then he can serve. Right? That's the whole point. That, that I know you're not allowed to cut off a leprous spot, but if that, well, that was more important, then you cut it off anyway. Rava says, no, not true. Even if you cut off the leprous spot, he still has to go to the mikveh afterwards, and then wait till the night, and wait till nighttime. So you see that it's not the leprous spot itself that makes him. Uh, unfit to serve, but rather the tumah also that comes with the leprous spot makes him unfit to serve. And so, see, it's not about the leprous, uh, he's just unfit. Oh, oh Rav Safra has something up his sleeve. Tenach negaim temeim, negaim tehorim ha'ika lememar. Okay, a, a kohen is unfit to serve, not only if he is a leper and has a sara, a nega sara, but also if he has any spots, dark spots, right, and anything that looks out of the ordinary, that Kohen, even though it's not Tameh, he still cannot serve. And in that case, you, if he has like a mole or something, you can't cut it off. There's still a prohibition of cutting it off, off even though there's no Tum'ah. And so there you see that you um, don't cut it off. And so it's not about the fact that he's Tameh, but rather about that item itself being there, that dark spot, whatever it is, being there. And so, um, uh, and so therefore, Rav Safra wins. Until Rav Ashe comes, Ella Amar Rav Ashe, Hecha Amrina De Ate Ase Vedache Lo Ta Ase, Kegon Mila Basarat Inami Sisit Bekil Aim. Hold on. That the case of of Kohen is different because when we have two things that come together, this is very important conceptually. The only time that one uh, overrides the other is when they um, they occur simultaneously. So Mila and Sarat, in the very act of cutting the Brit Mila. I perform both the mitzvah of milah and I violate the prohibition of cutting off a leprous spot. Um, so uh, this, it's the same act. Or also sisit and kilayim. When I put on, uh, if I put on sisit that has made out of wool and linen, that's permitted. But it's permitted because the very same act of putting it on both is the prohibition, but it's also itself the mitzvah. And so since they both come together, the mitzvah is more important. 
Mokim, I say, um, at the same time that I am over, overriding, uprooting the lot, I say, I am performing mitzvah aseh, so that's protecting. However, in the case of uh, Kohen, who is a leper, first I have to go and cut off his leper spot. And only then, you know, a few minutes later, he's going to go and perform an avodah. So you see that that act is a prohibition by itself. It's a kind of preparation for, but not itself the same act. And therefore, that's not a good example. And there, that, in, in that case, Ravaz Kalvachomer stands. And last line, this machloket that Ravah and Rav Safra had is parallel to a machloket Tanaim de Tanya, Besar, Rabbi Yoshia learns it from the word Besar, and that would follow Rav Safra, who also needs to learn it from a word because he rejected a Kavachomen. Rabbi Yonatan Omed, and Osarich, Shabbat Hamura, Docha, Sarat, Lokol Sheken. Rabbi Yonatan learns it from a Kavachomed that Shabbat is more stringent, and yet, Rimila is Docha Shabbat, and Shabbat is more stringent than Sarat, so all the more so, Rimila will, will override. Sarat, and that is uh, the same as Ravaz, Kavachomer, so Rava can agree with Rabbi Yonatan. Baruch Adonai Lolam, Amen, Amen. Thank you.